Grounded just hit early access and it's from your friendly neighborhood studio, Obsidian Entertainment. The same crew who worked on Fallout New Vegas, Pillars of Eternity, and The Outer Worlds, to name a few. Grounded is a survival game, but with a fun and sometimes horrifying twist. You play as a shrunk kid out on the yard and face off against bugs that are now much bigger than you are, including spiders. So if you have a sensitivity to spiders, close your eyes now. It has the survival mechanics of games like The Forest, but has RPG elements that remind me more of Terraria. It also supports co-op up to four players, which is cool. In this video, we will cover all the knowledge you will need to get started in the game. First, let's talk about how to meet your bodily needs as it is a survival game. In the bottom left-hand corner, you'll find your stamina, thirst, hunger, and health. Sometimes the top of your scab B will pop up letting you know you're near an objective. When you need water, still water is a last resort as it does hydrate you, but it makes you sick. Your next best source is droplets of water, juice, or soda, and you can tell the difference by the color. You'll find the juice and soda gathered near the soda cans and juice boxes around the map. And you'll also find the water droplets gathering on the ground or more commonly collecting on the end of grass blades. So if you're thirsty, look up to grass blades, find one with a droplet on it, hit that grass blade and the droplet will fall. If you can get close to the droplets while they're still in suspended animation, you can drink them outright. Grounded currently has no rain in it, and honestly, looking at the scale of these droplets, that feels like the right call, as that would be mayhem. So you'll be collecting droplets and consuming them for hydration, and you can store them in your canteen or in a water container. Because there's no rain, it won't collect in the water container naturally. You will have to put it there yourself. You can eat mushrooms and various small portion snacks that will give you a small hunger meter fill. Collect air quote meat from gnats, weevils, aphids, or grubs, for example, and cook them on a roasting spit. Hot tip, once the food has stopped rotating, it is done cooking. Meat does spoil over time, so be wary of that as well. And another side note, leaving food on the ground, even if it's spoiled, can attract visitors. Next, you'll be unlocking crafting recipes by finding new items in the game and analyzing them at either a field station or a lab. If you have not analyzed an item to extract its recipes, it will have a red dot on the icon in the upper right corner. The crafting and recipe collecting is, in my opinion, well done and has strong conveyance, so it's relatively easy to figure out. That said, let's review some of the rarer materials and places where people may get stuck. Thistle is not collected, it is harvested from a thistle plant that looks like this. Likewise, spider webs are harvested as well and currently only come from webs that are strewn across a gap like this. The tented web funnels you find out in the open are not interactable at the making of this video. There are plenty of options for building a base, both in style of construction and placement. However, keep in mind that bases in grounded can be leveled if a big enough swarm comes through. Ants and larvae in particular can be excessively destructive and need to be defended against. Also, sleeping at night can help avoid night raids, which can be devastating. R.I.P. my base. Trail markers can be placed anywhere, and I absolutely adore the icon and marker system in Grounded. You can change the icon and color for trail markers and even storage containers, which is awesome. Next, let's talk about dangerous enemies and walk you through combat. First, I love the representation of aggro by making the enemy that is in combat having glowing red eyes. It's a great tell that you've aggroed an enemy. Your first combat steps will likely be against gnats and mites. Gnats are a nuisance at their best. Mites can be sidestepped when they leap, so just kind of work around them as they come towards you. Ants come in two different kinds, worker ants and soldier ants. Both can be deadly, but the real strength of ants is in their numbers. If you let a wounded ant get away or kill one where others can see, you run the risk of being swarmed. The ants are protective and grouped together, so try not to kill ants near your base as they will come for vengeance. They have a fast charge attack that can be a challenge to avoid, but you can use grass stalks and obstacles to block it if you need to. It's a cheesy strategy, but in a pinch, you can also claim the high ground against ants. And true to real life ants, they are nosy. They will sneak into your base and loot your storage. They will dig into your backpack where you died and steal from it, or just cause general mayhem. You've been warned. Stink bugs or lichens have a massive amount of health, and when you get near them, they will release a deadly gas. You can, however, craft a gas mask to combat this. Now let's talk about the apex predator in Grounded, the spiders. 
In early access, you will see two kinds of spiders, wolf spiders and orb weavers. Wolf spiders tend to wander alone, but are fast and vicious. When fighting either spider, you want to be geared up and have preferably tier two weapons or higher. Learning to perfect block, that is blocking the instant an attack hits you, will make killing spiders much easier. Even if you get a partial block, you will reduce the damage you take. I've seen players complaining about the slow block timing, but I believe this was intentional as most of the enemies in Grounded have a different animation. By my estimation, the developers want to encourage you to time your blocks properly rather than spam them in hopes they might work. And of course, attacking them in groups is smoother than going Rambo on the spiders like I did. Wolf spiders are hard to escape due to their speed and you will be forced into a melee confrontation. But orb weavers are a very different beast. Be careful because orb weavers are often found in groups. They also have a ranged attack if you get too much distance on them. They can be really fast and they also have an AoE toxic slam attack in melee range. You can craft items with high stun rates and try to work this into your strategy. The stun works on all creatures in the game that I've been able to test it on. So it's a good strategy, especially in groups, have someone with a club that can stun enemies. Since the orb weavers aren't quite as fast as the wolf spiders, you can actually side strafe attack them with practice. Just note that the AoE slams can snag you and you want to avoid getting tracked by their lunge attack. I've had a lot of fun with this game and I hope you and your friends do too. Thank you so much for tuning in today and I'll see you in the next one.